this video, I want to talk about how we troubleshoot a single input when it is not activating. Also, in this video, I want to talk about how we figure out what is wrong with the program when it's not operating correctly and how to troubleshoot an input once we know that it is. So I've actually already fixed the problem. And so I'll go back into the video and show you my troubleshooting standpoints. But now that it's working, I want to show you how it's supposed to work. And then I will show you the steps that I used to troubleshoot it, okay? So in this case, so if you hit the start button, this will extend out, activate, and then go back. And you can see this on the program all of the inputs and outputs activating appropriately. So I'll run that one more time. I activate the start button. So LS2 has to be activated and the start button has to be activated. When that happens, memory locks in, the motor goes right. When it activates LS1, that kicks off the motor right and starts the motor left. Once the motor goes left, it will go left until LS2 is activated. Now, I will go back and I will show you what was happening when the system wasn't functioning correctly. Okay, so something happened in this program um, because what, what happened, something went wrong in either the program or the uh, circuitry here because this did not stop. This kept going past LS1. And so that's making me think that there's something wrong either with the program or with the push buttons and stop buttons, LS1, LS2, something's going on here. Now, when I go to troubleshoot this, I know that the program has worked before. So unless something has changed in the program, I'm pretty confident that there should be no issue here with the program. So I'm guessing it's some type of wiring or one of my inputs has gone bad. So while this is up, what I can do is I'm gonna go ahead and I can see and I can watch this. I can activate these inputs to see what's going on. So I can see here my start button is activated. I'm gonna come here, activate LS2. I can see that that is getting a signal on both uh, rung one, zero on rung zero and rung one. My stop button's activating okay. Let's come here to LS1. Okay, LS1 is not activating on my screen on rung zero or one. Okay, so that tells me that something is going on with this, whether it's a wiring problem or it is a problem with the actual LS1 here, okay? Now, if this has gone bad, this is gonna be really, really hard to replace, but we'll be able to troubleshoot that and uh, see what's going on. To troubleshoot this, the first thing that I wanna do is I like to come through and just begin to check voltages. So the first thing that I do is I wanna check that I, I turn it on to volt, my meter on to voltage. Then this is preset to AC. According to my schematic diagram for LS1 here, the problem exists. This is a DC circuit, okay? Now I know this has a red and a black, which can indicate different things in, di in different scenarios, but underneath here, the wires that were wired in, these are actually, go these are indicating that they're 24 volts. So let me go ahead and get this set up and I will start to read some voltages here to see where I'm at. The first thing I always like to do is to make sure that one, there is voltage to the terminal strip. This indicates to me right here that there is common coming into here and these, there's a jumper here that goes to the neutral on the output and there are two hot lines that are going to here. My instinct tells me that these are not the problems because if this was unplugged or didn't work or there wasn't 24 volts here, my LS2 wouldn't activate. So I'm coming here and here and I am getting my 24 volts. So I'm good, okay? So I know that there's 24 volts here so it's not a power supply problem or anything like that which I didn't suspect it would be anyway, okay? Now, if I look at the schematic diagram, I have a hot line coming up to here and then a hot line coming out when this is activated. 
Okay, so you can see on the schematic diagram, this is wired to number six. And in this case, I'm really lucky, I can trace that line right to here. So I'm gonna come over here from my common into six. And I'm gonna activate this to see if I'm getting voltage. Now, if I am getting voltage here, the problem is then downstream, okay? Something's unhooked, there's a wire loose, maybe my input's gone bad, something like that. But in this case, hopefully you can see this, we are not getting 24 volts. And if I'm worried like, well, maybe, maybe I'm a little bit unsure of when I should and shouldn't get voltage, I can come over to one that I know is working, in this case, number seven. So when I activate this, you can see that I am getting 24 volts DC when I keep it pushed all the way, okay? So what that tells me here is that there's an issue with my input here. Let this be a push button or anything else. My LS1 is now, something's going on from here out. So what I wanna do, because I know, I know I have 24 volts going into the switch. So 24 volts is coming in, but it's not getting down to here when, when the switch is activated, okay? So now I have, there are two possibilities. One, the switch has gone bad. That can happen. Or what I would probably also start to do is a little tug test to see what's going on. Okay, so I know that's here. I trace this down, oh, and look at this. It was hidden behind there, I couldn't see. I had a loose wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'll come in here, fix this, and see if that solves the problem. So now, I don't wanna come in here and activate this because I don't want the machine to start running. So what I can do is um, I'm going to go ahead and override the machine here in the PLC to make sure that this thing will track back. So I want this to go motor left. So in this case, I'll just right click, toggle bit, shift this over, allow this to run, it stops, I'll activate it. And there we go, now I know it's operating and I can go ahead and stop this. And now if I'm confident, I can come in here and you can see that I am getting, I am reading something right there on the PLC. Now, if this hadn't been the problem, let's say um, I was getting voltage here, I would have had to trace that line all the way back through using my schematic diagram and tracing the wires back all the way to the input to see what was going on. But in this case, this was a pretty easy one. Uh, my LS1 was bad. So um, as always, I hope this video helped you out in your PLC troubleshooting. And if it did, please uh, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much.